Hello and welcome back. I know I said last week we'd look at something else from the, the later try and haul me period, but I ended up trying to clean the roofs on on these uh, modern engine sheds and you can see they're, they're very, very dusty. I think mean, dust is the enemy of any layout. Look at this one, it's all looks completely grey, doesn't it? So if I just rub my finger on there, you can see, see the dust on there. So what I'm going to do is take this engine shed out for, for two reasons. One, to give the roof a good clean with a bit of lukewarm soapy water and, and, a, and to attach these windows which just keep dropping out. I don't know whether you've noticed if you look in the videos, you can very often see that these windows pop out from time to time. And the reason is I think that the, the actual glazing strips, there they've actually shrunk. So we'll have, we'll have a little look at that. And as I've shown on a recent video, I've got some LED lighting strips in these engine sheds, so I'm just going to have to disconnect those before we, we can go too much further. So you can see now we've got them unwired, how, how dull they look when the lighting's out there. So we should be able to lift this out relatively straightforward. One of those ventilators has just fallen off the top there. Is it going to come through the baseboard there? Yeah, straight through. Now we'll just have a quick look at the inside there. So one of those lighting strips is beginning to peel off a little bit. The sticky on the back of those is sometimes a little bit unreliable. Now we can see I've just fed the wires up the side there. I've just magic marked them in black. And we'll just lift out the other one whilst we're here. So nice and smoothly up. Again, this is probably better with two hands rather than one hand on the phone and lifting up single-handedly, but I think that's going to come through the baseboard. And there we go, we've got the, the same on the inside there, and I think we just heard one of those ventilators just drop off. Actually, no, that's just one of those window strips. They do, they do just slot into place in the roof sections, but as we'll see, they, they have shrunk. The modern engine shed seems to have shown up first in the, in the 1961 catalogue. So we'll just have a look at that, see the, the seventh edition, look at that wonderful price there. We'll just open up the catalogue on page 26 and 27, and we'll first just have a look at the, the original engine shed. Now this had been around in the, in the catalogue since the mid 50s. We'll have a look at the, the modern engine shed, which is on page 28. So it's quite delicate, the pages of this old catalogue, it's a very soft paper. And then we have it, so we've got the, the modern engine shed, double track R146, and right next to it, we've got the, the modern signal box as well, R145. So really great things. We've got that refreshment kiosk as well, a very unusual item. It doesn't really match with any of the other, other things. And here, an item that which I don't think was ever produced, the diesel horn electrically operates from 15 volts AC. That would have been quite a thing. I don't think that was ever actually produced. So we'll just pop that down and we'll have a look at the, the modern engine shed as it turned into bright red in 1971. I'll just pop that to one side. So here we have the 1971 catalogue. We've got page 34. We can see the, the modern engine shed there standing side by side. We can see they've gone bright red and they've got green ventilators instead of, instead of black ones. We'll just lift that up. A little bit closer so we can see that. Still carries the same model number. So set from 71 through to 77, they, they were in this bright red color with the green ventilators. And we can see here also the signal box has changed to bright red. It seems to be missing the old chimney there, doesn't it, in the picture? Quite often missing their chimneys when we, we find them. Along with the rest of the station buildings, I think they all changed to, to bright red in 1971 and we've just seen the, the cover of this vid, this uh, this catalogue in, in an earlier video. The modern engine shed was a very simple item, it was in, in three main parts, we've got the, the two sides and then we've got the roof, so three separate pieces which are just simply clipped together and then we've got the, the ventilators which are clipped into the top, and they're, they're quite fragile with the, the clips there, they, they can break quite easily so I'm just going to take those out and then each of the glazing strips 
were separate as well and they, they just clip in. And as I said when I was taking these off the layout, I think they have shrunk slightly. So if I just pinch that one out of there and just look at the length of that. So that's too short, isn't it? And it only just rests on that, that rail there. And the rail there, and they do tend to drop out quite quite easily if you're not careful. You see that it doesn't quite meet, meet the sides there. So we'll just take those out, and pop those down. And pinch this one out as well. So I think originally they would have been a bit more of a positive fit than that. If I turn this over, and I'll just take the side off the engine shed here. Here we go. You can see that, that glazing strip there has shrunk so much it doesn't fit between the, the two rails it's supposed to slide between. I've sellotaped that on there. Just take that off. Let's see if we can get that off there. There we go. If we just look at how that fits. You can see there's no way that's going to fit in there. So I think over the years they've just shrunk. And, uh, so it's necessary to just to, just to tape those in there. They've become a bit troublesome in the last month or so. So I'm going to, to re refix those. But the boxes that these came in are quite interesting. So both of the engine sheds I have, have boxes, but they're two different boxes. This is, is perhaps the prettiest one. This wonderful picture box. And we've got the catalogue number R146, modern engine shed. So this one's from the, the Trying Railways period. Very pretty thing, isn't it? And you could have the, the price scribbled on the end there. And we've got these wonderful other accessories that we could use. And look at the, the other end. Absolutely wonderful thing, isn't it? But the other one I've got comes in a very plain Trying Railways box. Great big box, almost double the size. Let's turn it over. R146 modern engine shed double track. See, we've got the old tape mark on there. And on the other side there. Just got it rubber stamped on there again. So, completely different style of packaging. I'm not sure when they change from this basic packaging through to this much prettier picture box style, but quite a change in size, isn't it? The, the, the old boxes. So, I've reattached the glazing strip as best I can, given that it, it shrunk slightly. I suppose I could make another one and rule some lines. On with, with a ruling pen, but uh, I think that one's going to do the trick really. And you can see the, the, the lines have all shifted as well as, as, it, as it shrunk that way. So we'll just pop that down and we'll have a look at the, the other part. So I didn't take the other side off, I just washed it quite carefully and that's, it. that's improved it no end. So once it's back on the, on the railway we'll, we'll stand these window lights back in because they do just balance just in, they haven't shrunk so much that we need to stick those in. And these LEDs, I had them in a video a couple of weeks ago and pointed out that they come on strips. They can be they can be bought online. You can cut these into strips of three and you just solder onto these tags. They've got the resistors built in to work with 12 volts. So they're, they're, they're quite good, they are sticky. They do peel off sometimes, the surface has got to be very clean. So these ones are, are attached quite nicely so we don't want to disturb them. And I've just used this this network cable which I used in, in the lights when I mended the, those uh, station lamps. And I've just wired it up here and I've just used magic marker to make them black so they don't show up too much. And we've got that one taped back in. So we'll, we'll get this back on the, on the layout and we'll, we'll have a look at them back in, back in situ. So they just sort of slot back in. Really is a very, very simple, simple construction. So I'm just going to take the opportunity of cleaning these rails while we've got the engine sheds off there. So we're just going to 
move these forward a little. So we'll just do the areas which aren't exposed normally. And we can just give them a wipe. While we're here, that can only improve things. You can see they get quite quite a build up even when you've, you've just got nothing using them, just open to the air. Just give that a light rub. And then we'll just bring the old 3F back in there. And we'll just work our way through them. So we'll just speed this a little bit up. It's quite a dull cleaning track. You'll have to excuse the proximity of lighter fuel to the models. But I'm being very careful here. So I'm just giving it a light rub with a, with a bit of cloth and lighter fuel and a, and a light rub with a, with a trap rubber there, not too heavily, just to, to clean the track up a bit. And that should make things just that little bit better. There we go, I've got, I've got those engine sheds back in and illuminated again. That's really freshened them up, no end. Giving them a, a good, good clean and getting those windows back in. I'm not sure quite how long they'll stay stuck in. Uh, I've been trying to avoid gluing them in, I don't really want to glue them. So we'll just have a look further along the layout here. The other place where there's a large buildup of dust, which is quite noticeable, is the, the tops of the old signal box there. So there I've got a maroon one. And the bed of the turntable, that gets dusty very quickly. And just moving down here, I've got one of the later red signal boxes from 71 on. Uh, I think I've repainted the roof on that. That was all scratched. And, somebody painted up grey when I got it. And again the top of that was very dusty but when I put in the extra LED strips a couple of weeks ago I took the opportunity to clean that up. So I suppose we should have something running shortly but the other place is you get the, the shrinking glazing strips that we saw in, in these old engine sheds over here. There's those old nine inch coaches. So especially on the restaurant car, it's really noticeable if we just have a look at that. You can see how the, the window, the, the curtains don't really line up with the windows. And just looking a little more closely at that, you can see, I don't think the curtains are, are supposed to be quite like that and the glazing strip doesn't quite reach to the end window there. You can see a similar thing going on on this side as well. So we'll just whip the, the roof off of that and we'll have a look on the inside. And there we can see, these must have been hand painted, I think. Let's see if we can pull one of those strips out. There we go. We can hide that along the, the side of the coach there. You can see that you're never quite going to get those to, to line up down there, are you? So I don't think that even though they're hand painted, they would have been painted so badly. So I think it, it shrunk quite a lot in length. Yeah. So it's a bit drastic to cut it down the middle. I've always sort of avoided that and, and just put up with it, but definitely shrinkage in this material. I wonder whether that's the same material has been used in, in the old engine sheds. I'll just put that one down. You can see the, the same deal here as well. You get those curtains semi almost closed and the curtain hanging in the middle as though the vandals have been in perhaps. Again, the same down the other side. This coach has definitely seen better days, it's just for spares. I think to finish off here today, we'll open point 18 there, up to the turntable. And we'll just get that lined up with the outlet track where the evening star is. So we did make it to a, a late trying Hornby model today, eventually. Nice and smoothly away. Tiny stutter there as she goes onto the bridge. Then we'll rotate counterclockwise. There we go, and then smoothly off she goes, approaching points number 18. Just listen to the sound of the wheels there. And we'll close those behind her. She goes out with the first radius curve approaching the station. I think that's probably it. If you look back again next week, we'll have something else from the Trying Hornby period. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye now.